even given the complexity of the world right now, the issues which are facing our students is thinking about how to go into the uncertain times, which means that we really have to produce students who are flexible, who really know how to think, um, who are not only prepared for one job, but are prepared for many jobs. And I think one thing that we don't know um, is what those jobs are going to be like, of course, but that demands also a spirit of innovation which means that our students have to get comfortable with a degree of ambiguity, have to learn to be innovative and adaptable into those circumstances. We have lots of, of things in place in schools in terms of um, the curriculum we teach, the way that we divide the disciplines and the, the subject areas, the tests that we give, and those have accustomed our students to being compliant to learning to play the game of school and often learning to get by with the least effort because there's no sense in putting forth a lot of effort into things you don't really care about. And so the culture of the classroom is really important and through the culture what we deliver is we deliver a lot of messages messages about what is important, about what counts. So if you take that metaphor of messaging just a bit further, then it means that we are telling our students a story. When they come to school, we are telling them a story about what school looks like, about what learning looks like. We're telling them a story about what counts as learning. We're telling them stories about what it means to be educated and what it means to be smart. So as teachers, to understand culture in our classrooms, to understand culture in our schools, we have to begin to pay attention to the messages which we are sending students. So in contrast to the old story, this, the old story of school is often a story of compliance and a story of work. So students learn that school is about kind of keeping your head down, doing what the teacher tells you, turning in work, turning in work for the points, even though you may not have learned anything from it, um, figuring out what the teacher wants and giving them that. So that story about compliance is really strong. So we're shifting that story and want the story to be much more one about thinking, about engagement, about empowerment. Research by a colleague, um, Fred Newman, has shown that when students regularly encounter opportunities that ask them to apply their knowledge in new situations, that ask them to effectively communicate their ideas, and that make rich connections in the community, those students do better. They do better um, not only in standardized tests, but they also do better consistently as they progress. Another one would be um, the interactions. When a classroom has positive interactions, positive relationships, students learn better. And in fact, it's one of the most crucial features, um, again, a real wealth of research, that the students that don't feel connected to a teacher, that don't feel connected to a school, are more likely to drop out and also to have lower um, performance skills. So we could look at any of these and see how each one of those really contribute to the learning of our students. I think an educational revolution, and I think that it's starting now, is one in which we gave um, more control for decision making and the shaping of schools to teachers giving voice to teachers to make changes in their school and school system. I think that would be a revolution. Mm -hmm.